Please give him a warm applause. Thank you. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, contributing to WordPress core. Um, and this talk, though, will not focus on how to get started with contributing to core. Um, so I hope I hope you've been at a contributor day before, um, or maybe yesterday, or um, in general, even even if you haven't been to a contributor day yet, you can still go there later and maybe memorize something of what is part of this talk. Because this talk addresses what comes after a contributor day if you want to continue contributing. If you're interested in becoming a more long-term contributor, how to approach this after after having worked on your first ticket or patch on the first contributor day. And the way I'm going to do this is basically I'm going to tell a bit of my own story and uh, take out what um, I basically then share with you what I learned during all that during that um, time and uh, so that you hopefully have a good path ahead of you. So um, first of all, when I started, I, my first WordCamp was WordCamp Europe 2015. Um, and I, I joined the, I, took, I went to the contributor day there, and I joined the core table simply because I was a coder, and I thought, well, that's probably where I could help the most. Um, the, at the time, the core table it was re, uh, led by Konstantin Obelnend, who um, was the release lead for WordPress 4.3. That was the release that came out a few months or weeks after that WordCamp. And we just had one very simple task to test the heck out of the new site icon feature. Um, you may remember WordPress 4.3 was the release if you um, that with where the site icon feature was introduced, which allows you to tweak the fav icon. Um, so at the point of the WordCamp, that feature was almost ready, or, um, but we just had the task to test it. Um, and I and at that day, I fixed. I worked on my on the. I fixed a very small bug that only occurred when JavaScript was disabled, which is probably rare today, but still exists and it needed to be fixed. Um, it was only 16 lines of code out of the hundreds that were a part of the whole feature. But at the end of the day, actually, um, this whole feature was committed and uh, I got my first props. So this is what you get when something is committed to WordPress core where you contributed to. Um, so it's it's just it's just that list at the bottom. Um, my username is Flixos, the Flixos90, and that made me super proud to be in the list of people who contributed to WordPress Core. Um, it was very motivating for me back then to have contributed to a big feature, even though my contribution was very minor. It was just it was just so, so amazing that I was part of that feature, um, and I was actually so eager to that I even worked on another ticket the same day while I was in the hotel room for an hour. Um, so um, again, I will not sp speak too much about Contributor Day. I'm just going to, I would just recommend to all of you who are interested to attend a Contributor Day in the future, if you haven't already, because it's much easier to get started there than if you're just sitting at home or at your workspace and you have to go through the documentation, which is there, but it's very hard to find and figure out unfortunately, and we're trying to improve that. Um, so over the past, over the next uh, half year, I occasionally worked on tickets uh, here or there, um, sometimes at home, but mostly was still at work camps that I attended. Like here, this is a picture from WordCamp Berlin 2015. Um, and this ticket was then the first one that I opened myself. It was a small bug. It doesn't really matter what it is about. It was a small bug that I discovered. And uh, I got a very welcoming response, and which was very important to me. But then the next response was that the ticket was closed. Um, well, and first of all, it was first it was a bummer. But yeah, after two responses, the ticket was already closed as invalid or what? What is? What was it? Yeah, won't fix. It won't be fixed. Nice. Um, so at least, but I got an, an elaborate response on why what was the issue and why this can't really be fixed without breaking backward compatibility. And that's a big part of WordPress. They try to not break backward compatibility, at least in general. Um, so that was 
And so there are there will be cases where you run into issues like that, and you have to be able to deal with them. That's basically just an internal mental thing, I guess. Um, but there are, of course, motivating parts. Um, for me, that was, uh, at, at, from, at one point, uh, the introduction of a WP term class. Um, you, may be, if you, you may know, know the WP post class, which is a little more common to be used. But WP term is exactly the same thing. It's just a very simple class that only has properties and it's just an object model. Um, but for me, it felt very great to be part of introducing a class to WordPress core. Um, but again, when you when you run into you will run into frustration while on your path to becoming a WordPress contributor or or evolving as a WordPress contributor, um, and there are a few things to be aware of to prevent that the best way possible. So don't patch immediately and discuss first. Not all everything the WordPress is, work, contributed to WordPress core is not just about code, and by far it's not. Um, you always have to discuss approaches, how to do things. Um, if you, especially if it's an enhancement, first of all, it needs to be figured out: is this even viable to be in, in core before starting to spend hours and hours of writing code? Because if that gets rejected afterwards, of course you're frustrated because you spend hours on it. So wait first and see what other people say and argue and all that. And even for bugs, um, sometimes bugs are actually very simple to solve, then you can go write code immediately, but in many cases even those can be fixed in multiple ways and maybe one way is better than the other, so that needs to be discussed as well. Um, it's very important to over time um, get to know the WordPress philosophies. Uh, there is a page um, where you can find those and um, well this is a link, you can see the actual link but the slides are online later so you can actually <coughs> click that link. Um, so the WordPress philosophies basically define what belongs into WordPress and what doesn't. And um, you can, of course, you, you need to read them first, but over time you really can, um, yeah, make them part of your mindset. Um, and then also um, be open-minded, listen to other people's opinions, um, don't be stubborn and just try to bring through your own um, agenda. Um, about a first, <coughs> Be stubborn enough when you actually when it actually makes sense. Like you also sometimes need to convince other people of your opinion, um, and especially when you're when some when you feel you're being rejected, try to step back for a, for a bit um, because it's easy to feel insen uh, insulted or offended. Um, but when you come back later, sometimes you will actually see oh this was that makes sense what that guy, that person says. So um, there's also a great article on that, um, which is basically pretty much the rundown of this entire talk. <laughs> um, Qualities of being a great WordPress contributor by Andrew Nason, who is one of the lead developers of WordPress. Um, yeah, and in case you actually have to deal with rejection, it, um, for example, when your ticket is closed, with no reasonable response in your, um, in your for what you for, for your tastes, um, then please ask. You can ask why why was this close? I don't understand this decision, and you will probably you very likely get a response, and I hope you do, um, because sometimes the people who close a the ticket they're they're busy like everyone. They forget to be elaborate, um, and so please ask. Don't be rude or don't just walk away saying hey they don't want me here. No, that's not the case. Um, it can feel that way, and I know that firsthand. But try to try to assume the best in, in everybody else, and and that's basically it. yeah. You have, and don't take anything personally, especially especially if you knew that other people don't know you. So why would they want to be mean to you? That just doesn't make sense. And on that part, there's also there was another WordCamp talk at WordCamp US. Two years ago, um, uh, yeah, where can, which deals much more with these uh, psychological issues, basically that are part of contributing. So um, next part step for me was WordCamp US 2015. Uh, at the time, I worked for a multi-network client, which is somewhat more of a more complex multi-site. Doesn't really matter now, um, but I had watched. Uh, 
WordPress TV video about this topic by um, John James Jacoby, who is also the one of who is, for example, the he is one of the main maintainers of uh, BuddyPress. And at so at, w, at WordCamp US, I briefly talked to him about this topic. I asked him some questions, and at the end of this conversation, he said, "Hey, uh, the multi-site team there is really small. So if you're interested and you want to improve things, just go ahead out there." And I was like, "Okay, that's right." So a few days later, I joined the multi-site channel on Slack because this again was an area that I was dealing with a lot. Um, I initially started following tickets. Um, this is something you can do in your WordPress track preferences. So you get an email every time which ticket in that part of WordPress is changed or created. Um, I only worked on a few things initially, but I generally kept an eye out on what was going on. At one point, though, I was working on a ticket where I didn't receive any feedback after weeks. So, what do I do there? Um, I noticed there are multi-site meetings, so I joined one of these meetings, um, and I first just said, hey, I'm new, I want to help, uh, what can I do? And, and of course, I also um, then um, asked for feedback on that particular ticket. So. Doesn't, again, it doesn't really matter what this particular ticket was about. Um, but my first response I got was this. I hope you can read this. Um, well, the second response was not great either. I can't read. Oh, okay. It just says uh, this ticket brings back some bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the first comment is just oof. <laughs> um, well, this happens. Um, but I, I actually also got a real response. Um, so, um, but the gist was that this ticket is overly complex. It's very old. So the ticket number, as you may see, it's something 15,000. And right now we are at ticket 43,000 or something. So it's, it was probably seven years old. And if such a ticket is still open, it's probably open for a reason. Um, so the ticket is super complex. People have been avoiding it. Um, and yeah, and these things happen and um, by the way, this ticket is still open as of today, and if I had known this back then, I would probably have quit. <laughs> but now, I feel like um, there, it, there's still validity. So the point is, is that the ticket is still open. It's just very tough to rework on, to be worked on. It's not a priority, but it is not closed, at least. So this is my, this is the point where you have to be optimistic. <laughs> at some point, it, it will have its time. Um, but the gist is, be persistent. So, don't ask for feedback if you don't get it. And joining a Slack meeting is the best way to do so. Um, about being persistent, there's a hilarious short film on YouTube which is very nerdy. Um, you can't just open a pull request and run. It's, it's, it's so nerdy, yeah. Um, so, it's, and, and for me, Joining that meeting was basically where I found a focus for myself um, because you can't be an expert in everything, of course. So over the first more than first first more than half a year, I just worked on tickets here or there, and the problem was that I because of that I didn't really get in touch with any particular people. I was dealing with random people all over the place, and you can't actually communicate well because you don't actually get to know someone better. Of course, getting to know still means you're sitting behind each other's computers and nobody has ever met, but um, you start to figure out what the, what the other people are like and what their mindset is and something that all that stuff. So, um, and you also um, get more expertise, of course, over time in your particular components. So I really urge you to try to find what interests you the most in WordPress core and start contributing mostly to that particular area. Um, yeah, participate in their Slack meetings. If, and in case a component does not have Slack meetings, um, you can go to the components page. There's a page that said that has all the maintainers and ask them maybe um, why is there no meeting? Would it make sense to start one? Um, even can can I help to start one? You don't need to be the expert. You don't, you can be new and still start a meeting. You have to moderate the meeting. Um, and it's, it, I know it, this can be tedious. It's definitely much easier if there is already a meeting, but don't hesitate to ask to directly um, 
send a message to one of the maintainers. So next, um, it's uh, WordCamp Nuremberg 2016 in Vienna. Yeah, so I had at that before that WordCamp, there have, has been a call for component maintainers. So component maintainers again, those are the people that deal that handle tickets for individual components and run meetings and all this these kind of things. Um, so I asked uh, Dominic Schilling, who is also a long-term core developer, um, whether I could be the component maintainer for post thumbnails, so featured images in WordPress. This is the smallest component that WordPress core has. There were six open tickets, um, so I just thought, hey, maybe the smallest component is a good way to start. Um, eventually, um, I became also became a component maintainer for multi-site, which made much more sense because I was actually interested in that. <laughs> um, so, please, um, while I did, while I did, while I did think initially I should try to start with something small, it didn't really make sense. Um, you should really focus on what you're actually interested in. Just, no matter how big the component is, if you're interested in the REST API, go for it. Like, um, it, you don't, you have to, you just, you just learn things by doing it and it doesn't, you don't have to start small. Um, when you are a component maintainer, you get a few, technically a few more permissions on track, you can milestone tickets and um, you can, you have more, you have a responsibility to basically, if there's, if someone opens a new ticket, make them feel welcome, uh, give, give feedback to the tickets and uh, generally try to focus on someone else's stuff, not only your own, that's very important anyway. Um, yeah, make new contributors feel welcome. And if, when you are at a point that you're a component maintainer, you will already, you might not already notice, now you're on that other end a little bit more, and you now have to accommodate new people. And if you have made bad experiences, which you might have, um, just try to do it better, as always. Um, and of course, yeah, do things reasonably. Don't just milestone a ticket because it's your own. Um, and yeah, especially the most important thing is just be, don't be overly critical, be welcoming. Um, put a small emoji here or there. It can really feel nice in that very digitalized <coughs> work where you don't meet everyone, anyone ever. So um, yeah, so WordCamp Europe 2016. So what I just said is actually wrong. You meet people. When you go to work camps, uh, you can actually meet the people that you talk to on a computer for every week. Um, so for me, WordCamp Europe 2016 was the work camp where um, I met um, Jeremy Felt and Johnny Harris, who are the other two people that worked a lot on multi-site during that time um, in person for the first time. And that was so productive. It, I mean, we do always work remotely and we all, always only chat, but it was so much more productive to talk in person about pain points and collaborate on Contributor Day while sitting next to each other and it's it's just so much quicker. Um, yeah, and you actually get to know the people behind the names and um, hatchels. And well, after all, you can also have a beer with friends and make friends from all over the world. Um, yeah, I really urge you to go to go to work camps. It's it's great. Um, so after work camp Europe, it was time for my bachelor thesis. I was in, still in college, um, so I took some time off my regular work as a freelancer to focus on that. <coughs> but uh, what actually happened is I just focus on core. <laughs> um, well, I didn't spend. I, I I mean, I still got my thesis ready and all, but uh, yeah, I contributed a ton to core. Um, and I took on some new tasks, um, like ran, started running some multi-site meetings, but sometimes as a backup when someone of the other two wasn't there or something like that. Um, yeah, so um, for 4. WordPress 4.6, I received a recent rock star status, which up to this day I have no idea what that means, <laughs> but it was great to get recognition. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's very important to be open to new tasks, run a meeting, um, document, uh, write, write recaps for meetings and post them on the make WordPress.core blog. Um, yeah, just be open-minded. Um, then, 
my, on my final thesis day, let's fast forward to end of November 2016, um, I had a hard time, <coughs> excuse me, I had a hard time falling asleep because I have been, I was thinking, did I do everything, did I do everything right, blah, blah, blah. And after hours of laying awake in bed, I um, opened up my phone or looked at my phone and I had seen this message, so which basically said, now you can be a core committer. I was like, whoa. Um, I had not expected this at all, and of course at that point I could just bury my thought of ever falling asleep. So I uh, stayed up and I read some related parts of the core handbook, which I guess is so German of me. And I, uh, yeah, I went to college, handed in my thesis and had a wonderful day of sleep. Um, it's very important to know that you don't have to be a co-genius. I I felt like I felt like all these other people were so much more experienced than me, but somehow, just by iterating, learning from your mistakes, um, being persistent, improving skill set, being passionate, all these things um, they are most important. So to make a difference, and you don't need to be a committer to make a difference. You can. Make, you can help out in so many ways, even on core development. So, um, WordCamp US 2016, uh, I did my, actually did my first commit, um, and it was another a great thing about this was um, that I gave someone else their first props. I noticed it, I, I met that same person later during the same WordCamp, so that person was also part of Contribute today. Uh, and that was really, that felt really good to also some, give somebody else their first props. Um, so, and at the point I did the commit, I was suddenly, it suddenly made click and I knew exactly why some of the, why, why some of the tickets stay around for so long. Um, because you really don't want to break anything. So the people who commit things, they have to, they really don't want to break anything, so have they want to make 100% sure that something doesn't, that nothing breaks. So, initially, I sometimes was like, why is, why, this is done, why isn't that part of WordPress core? But that was probably because the other, the more experienced contributors knew that this is, integrates in so many weird ways that you have to be very, tested very much and these kinds of things. So, in those cases, when that happens, um, trust the more seasoned contributors, um, and, but of course ask why, um, again, ask for feedback, be persistent. And yeah, pay attention to details, I learned this mostly as a committer, but it, you should already be aware of that before, the way before. Um, consider edge cases, WordPress is written very in a bad way, um, and you probably know that. So. You have to look at 10 other areas to figure out whether something breaks. And so, and of course you don't know where, which, how all these things integrate, but you that this is something you learn over time. Um, well, the beginning of 2017 then, um, or I went on many more, many more word camps. It was just great to keep in touch with all the other people that you otherwise um, just chat to. Um, I took on some new um, tasks, um, and then at, uh, at the middle of 2017, before WordCamp Europe, I was part of the community summit. There was there were very few, some very uh, interesting discussions. Um, the most important for me personally was that um, together with some other people like um, Alash Lessa, um, we created a PHP initiative and we are now aiming to um, inform more of the non-technical users about um, old PHP versions and that they need to upgrade. Um, so, well, that's it for now. I don't know where my uh, path will take me, but I hope I could give you some hints at what you can, what you should be aware of when, <coughs> when interested in being a long-term contributor and building that relationship. So here's just a quick uh, summary and that's it. Thanks. And uh, 
uh, for during the questions. <coughs> I'm just going to show some quotes by some long-term contributors and why should you even do this? So here are some impressions of what contributing to CORE can also give back to you personally or professionally. But yeah, please ask any questions. Any questions? Um, uh, do you need to have technical skills when you want to contribute to the WordPress project? Or is contribution also open to people that are non-technical people? So, um, there are many areas which you can contribute to. I would say for Core, which is the software WordPress itself, you, there needs to be uh, some technical knowledge involved. But there are many other areas um, in WordPress where it is not as much like that. Um, um, there are, if you go to a contributor day, you will get to know all these different areas. Um, there is a community team which helps organizing events like this. Um, there is uh, translation support, uh, WordPress TV, um, which deals with video editing. And there are probably, I think there are like 15 different teams, and some of which require technical knowledge, but most of them actually don't. So there are tons of ways to contribute. Also, if I can add to that, are you on Slack? Yes, I am. Yes, check the channels. You can find all the ways you can contribute on the Slack channels. And it's also very inspiring to see what people are doing right. to get started. Right. Anybody else? I have a question for you. Um, you put up these uh, quotes from other people, how contributing uh, enhanced their life. How did it enhance your personal life or your work life? Or what did it do yeah. in your life? Um, so I think, um, for me, when I started, I. I, I mean, WordPress has basically given me a job, and um, WordPress doesn't cost anything. Um, it has given me new people and friends from anywhere, um, and I really, that's, I think it's just, uh, I, I, I want to give something back to the project, and that's my main motivator, I would say. Great, great. Well, thank you very much. Big applause for Felix.